Mic check. Peas and carrots. Peas and carrots. Payday. Hi, I'm Ashley Daigle, and this is Advice from the Cherbarian. Never heard that word before? That's because I smushed two words together. Because I felt like it. This week, we're going to do what we always do. Make a dollop of advice to improve your life. Born from a few of my successes and a boatload of my mistakes. With the book recommendation of the week, unearthed by my voracious love of reading. From self-help to historical fiction and everything in between. This week on the pod, we will be talking about therapy, how to find a therapist, how to make the best of that situation, and how they might be able to help you. Also, I've got one brag about someone having what I would say is a delightfully fun midlife crisis. If you like what you hear, and I really hope you do, please, pretty please, with two cherries on top, tell two people about this podcast and send them a link to an episode because direct word of mouth is huge for a little pod like mine. And now, let's get into it. Before we get into today's topic, I have to say that I am pretty excited that I am wrapping up season one of this podcast. What does that mean? Well, it means that I arbitrarily decided that 13 episodes would make up a season and that this is the 13th episode and thus I finished the season. Um, it's just like, it's like this nice little validation treat for me to say that I completed something arbitrarily based on the parameters that I created. So yay me. Um, I've always liked the number 13. So that's what I'm doing. So, you know, I hope you enjoy this episode and I hope that you've enjoyed the first season and I intend to have many more to come. So thanks for coming with me on this journey together. Today, with that milestone I made up that I have achieved, I wanted to talk about therapy. This is really important because therapy, in particular, the therapist I'm meeting with right now, is a big reason that we have this podcast. She helped me get there. And the reason that I call her my mean therapist is because she is mean, because she holds me accountable, and she makes me do things in that I say I'd like to do them and then she helps me to do them. And like, isn't that just rude? Like, how dare she? And I'll get into the details of that. But let's let's talk a little bit about therapy in general, right? I have been going to therapy off and on for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. I began when I had a relationship ended and was, you know, kind of bummed and said, you know, maybe I should talk to someone. And I did. Um, it helped me for a period of time. And then that was that. And then, you know, as other things have happened in my life, there's been occasion where I really wanted a third party. And therapy has always helped me out. I know that this can be taboo. Um, it's gotten better nowadays, right? It's like less taboo-ish to talk about therapy in certain friend groups, in certain age brackets, maybe in certain parts of the country. Um, but there's still definitely a stigma. Like, I feel a little anxious talking about it. But I think it's important, so we're just going to power through. Well, I'm going to tell you the steps that I think that you should take that make it easy to find a therapist that's going to help you. And it must be said that the fact that this is hard is, is totally understandable. It makes perfect sense. Anything having to do with healthcare in this country is daunting and exhausting and near unnavigable, okay? So if you have tried to think about getting a therapist and then you've dipped your toes in and you weren't able to make it happen because, you know, you just couldn't figure it out or who takes the insurance or what time of day, whatever, right? That's why we're talking about it today. So maybe I can help you out. I hope. That's my goal. So here is step one of trying to find yourself a good therapist. You want to go to the website Psychology Today. So this is accredited. This is a thing. I think psychi psychologists, excuse me, they can pay in to be a part of it. So it's not going to have like everybody ever in the history of everything, but it's at least a group that you can look at, a website that is somewhat validated that has people who are professionals and you can maybe see reviews of them and things like that. The thing about this website that makes it super awesome is that you can filter for the issues you might want to talk about, what insurance you have, whether you want to be virtual or in person. So you could just, you know, do a Google search for a therapist in my area and that might get you going. But this psychology today, I think, super helpful in trying to narrow down, you know, who might be available to talk to you. So step one, psychology today, take it for a ride, do some filtering, 
find you some people that seem interesting. Drop them, you know, bookmark them. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Step two, and this is not going to sound fun. I know because I did it and I didn't think it sounded fun. You're going to email seven different people. I know that seems like a lot. It is. But some people may not be taking new clients. Some people may take a while to get back to you. You're casting a wide net. Okay, so you're going to email seven. And then, and I don't know if you're going to like this part either, you're going to set up initial appointments with three to five people. And again, I know, I know I did it. My friend who like helped me find a therapist told me to do this. And I was like, that sounds like too many people. But listen, it is not about finding the first person who is closest to you who can get you on the calendar. That is not the way to find yourself a successful therapist. You need to shop around or date around, right? Just think of it like you are forming a relationship with this person. You need to be able to trust them. You want them to be able to help you. And that can't necessarily work with the first person you pick out of a phone book. So you need to schedule three to five initial appointments. Some people will do these and they do like a free little 10, 15 minute consult. That might be enough for you to get a sense of a person. Maybe it isn't. Maybe you need a full calendar appointment and it will take time. And I know, but guess what? You are worth investing the time in. So do what I'm telling you to do. Please just try. Just give it a try. And then after you've met with, like I said, three to five people, you should have one person that you say, you know what, of these people that I looked at, that I vetted, that I spoke with, this person, I think we're going to vibe the most. And so you start meeting with them. Now, listen, your picker may not be A grade, right? You may pick a person that you think is going to work out and you have a couple of appointments with them. And guess what? You're not feeling it. What I don't want you to do is stay with a therapist that you're not vibing with. The therapist doesn't even want you to do that. They want to help you. And I should say to any therapist that is like, ooh, I don't know, you know, if you tell them that you're shopping around and they say, uh, I don't know if I like that, they are not a good therapist. So go ahead and cross them off your list. Um, but the point is, you may have to break up with a therapist. I've had to do that. You get to a point along the therapy relationship where, you know, maybe you don't have the same issues you're dealing with anymore or like you just feel like you've plateaued and they, they're not really helping you like they used to. That can feel like, you know, sort of dreading your therapy appointment and feeling like it's a drag on your calendar. And then you just, you know, you email them and you say, hey, you know, this has been great, but I, I don't need to continue services at this time. And they're used to that. That's part of their job. And it can be difficult, okay? You can phone a friend. You can send me a DM if you're like, I need to break up with my therapist. Can you help me? I will totally help you because it's hard. It's hard to have that conversation, but you need to do it for you. You do. Because therapy can be super great. And now I'm going to tell you about how therapy made this podcast. So as you may know from the previous episode when I talked about getting rejected and getting laid off, I had the nugget to the nugget of an idea to start this podcast, you know, I don't know, months ago, years ago. I've always liked talking in microphones. It's just like a natural pathway for me. Um, but, you know, I never really moved forward on it. And I was meeting with this therapist, uh, my mean therapist. Her name is Kate. I told her I was going to name drop her in this episode. And she was like, you should tag me. And I was like, I'll tag you in it. Um, it's good to be able to antagonize your therapist a little bit. Um, but anyway, so I had told her, you know, in this period of unemployment that, you know, oh, yeah, I kind of thought about starting a podcast. And so she's like, when are you going to do it? When When's the first episode going to be? And I was like, excuse me, that sounds like uh, goal setting, which I have been desperately avoiding. And how dare you? And no, thank you. Um, and she called me out on that pretty directly. And I did not like it. Um, but I did like it. Like, that's what I, I I need a stern talking to every now and again. And so she literally made me set a date in the calendar. And it was, what was it supposed to be? I didn't meet that deadline, by the way. It was going to be January 23rd, one, two, three. Just like really flowed, right? Didn't meet that. And we also talked about, you know what? If you don't meet that exact deadline, then that's not the end of the world. And I was like, I don't know about that. It does sound like the end of the world to me. Um, but anyway, so I did launch this podcast because you're listening to it. And, you know, I think she would say, you know, I did the work. She was a catalyst in it. I am obviously making it and doing it. But without someone sitting there and making me put a date in the calendar and have accountability, 
I don't know if I would have gotten there. And it's challenging. You know, I'm enjoying this hobby. It can be stressful because I can make anything stressful. Um, but I'm glad that I'm here. And so for me, therapy, a therapist, a good therapist is someone who can hold a mirror up to you and can hold you accountable and help you do the things that you know you want to do and you say you want to do, um, but are just having a hard time getting there. So I encourage you to talk to a therapist, find one, and see how that journey goes for you, because I think it could be a good one. I also wanted to say, um, I can appreciate that for different personalities, it can feel very different. So I would gladly pay many people to listen to me talk at them and to talk about myself. Like, that sounds like a good time. So I can appreciate that for my personality type, therapy, you know, I'm always looking forward to a person who has to listen to me talk about myself. I get that that's not everybody. And if that feels really uncomfortable for you, I can understand that and I can empathize. But try to think about, you know, think about something in your life that maybe you want to try to do and you haven't been able to take the steps there or something that you feel like is holding you back and think about what it would feel like to move past those things to make progress. So try to focus on the goal and then maybe you'll have a different outlook to trying therapy. And with that, we are going to move into the unrequired reading of today's episode. The book is called Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. And, you know, with a lot of things, books can be a foray into having a greater understanding of it. So I think this book would literally be good for any human being on planet Earth because I think the book is that good. But, you know, if you raise a skeptical eyebrow at the concept of therapy, but you have a hankering maybe for some self-discovery, you know, dip your toes, toes, there it is, the word toes, dip your toes into the pool of therapy by reading this book and just let its authenticity and her warmth and her truth just like wash over you. Um, this book is, uh, it's a real vulnerable book. So Lori Gottlieb, uh, when she was writing this book, is a therapist in crisis. So her long-term relationship had just ended. She has a looming book deadline for, I think, this book, and she was stuck. And so this is about her and her own, you know, journey in therapy, as well as relationships with some of her patients and the things that she learns from them, the things they learn from her. And um, it is, it's just a really great book. What I enjoyed the most about it is that, you know, it can be lonely on this planet as you're trying to go about your day because you're the only person that really knows your struggles and knows your hopes and your dreams and your fears. And so there is nothing that raises my spirits more than getting a real glimpse into someone else's experience that shows you how normal they are um, and how by the transitive property, maybe how normal your own insecurities and fears and hangups are. And that is exactly what she's doing. And y'all, I have a confession to make. I am not generally a book highlighter or a page folder, especially I would never, never hear me. I would never fold the pages of a library book. Okay. Would never do that. However, on occasion in my own personal collection, I will do that. And this puppy made me pull out a marker and fold some pages down. Like so many, it's 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 egregious, except for how it's my book and I guess I can do what I want. And so I want to share a couple passages that were super impactful to me. So this was in reference to one of her clients who was, he's a, he was a bit of a jerkwad. And so she's trying to help him with his relationships. And so she told him, when working with couples on empathy, often I'll say, before you speak, ask yourself, what is this going to feel like to the person I'm speaking to? Oof, right? Like, I know I am an external processor. The words are out of my face before I've even considered the end of the sentence. And so it can be a real challenge for me to think about what the other person's going through or what their experience is today and how they will receive what I'm saying. So that little tidbit, that certainly got probably like a double highlight. Um, the next section 
Uh, this was in reference to helping her young son cope with her breakup. So her relationship ending, her young son knew the person. And so she said, I stopped talking because nothing I said would help him right then. He was going to have to feel sad. Now, let's raise our hands if we are fixers and we want to fix things for people. My hand's up. You can't see it because, you know, I'm probably not going to put this video up. Um, but if you're a fixer, if you're somebody that's, oh, what's wrong? Well, are you sad? What's going on? You know, sometimes there's nothing you can do for the people you care about. You cannot fix the moment. They have to just feel it, whether it be sad or anger or whatever. And that is that's a tough lesson. Um, and then the last part that I will share from this book this is a this is a longer a longer chunk, um, but so this was in reference to what often happens when people have a life event and start therapy. So she said, "Here, people procrastinate or self sabotage as a way to stave off change, even positive change, because they're reluctant to give something up without knowing what they'll get in its place." The hiccup at this stage is that change involves the loss of the old and the anxiety of the new. Although often maddening for friends and partners to witness, this hamster wheel is part of the process. People need to do the same thing over and over a seemingly ridiculous number of times before they're ready to change. Lori, I mean, next time just at me, you know, just just send me a personal email. You don't have to put this in your book because you clearly wrote this about me because I know the ringer that I put my friends and family through when I am trying to do something new, like this podcast, for example. And, you know, also, for example, procrastinating recording two days episode. I was excited to do it. I knew I was pumped about the topic. I really want to share it with people. But still, it's hard to put yourself out there. And so I keep procrastinating and self-sabotaging as I'm trying to make this thing I care about because it's new, because it's different, because I'm learning. And, you know, preparing to record this podcast and re-record, re-reading, excuse me, that section, I was like, woof. Way to go, past Ashley, for making a note that would help future Ashley. So, anyway, Lori Gottlieb's book. There is also a workbook. Um, I own it. I haven't done it. You could check that out, too, if you're more of a workbook person. But I highly suggest her book. Um, if you're interested in making a change and taking a taking a step outside the usual, she is here for you with her authenticity. Next up, we have one of my favorite parts of the week. I'm gonna get to brag about somebody. Yes, yes, I'm excited. Do 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 do. I launched I Do Mean to Brag because as I covered in my Brag It Up episode, it can be hard to brag on yourself. So I'm going to do it for you. Mouth air horn. That also went a little Doctor Who in there if you're familiar. New season just launched. Anyway, <clears throat> without further ado, this week's brag is for Pam Moore. And it is a stand-up brag. So Pam and I connected on Facebook where I was out looking around for people to brag on. And so she has always wanted to do stand-up comedy. It's always been just an interest of hers, a passion, but she never quite made the jump to do it. Um, a friend of hers was teaching a stand-up class and, you know, she trotted out her usual excuses. She was like, I don't have the money. I'm too busy. Um, but then she learned that two other friends were taking it. So then she thought about it a little bit more. But what really put her over the edge was that she had a chance meeting with an old friend of hers that had had cancer. And this was a person who was her same age, had kids the same age as hers. And so it was just this strong reminder that you don't know how long you have. And so um, her, she, she said, life is short. What am I waiting for? And so at the age of 45, she has embarked on this stand-up comedian endeavor and by all accounts, is having a blast. I'm sure having challenges and struggles with it, but definitely excited to be putting yourself out there. So applause to you. Standing ovation. Imagine a crowd at a small comedy club. That's, that's what I'm trying to invoke for you. Way to go, Pam. 
So my take on this brag is that Pam is doing the thing, right? It is it is hard to put yourself out there and take a chance. And it is easier to let excuses and doubts and old patterns win the day. But, you know, maybe maybe today's the day or tomorrow's the day. Maybe today you're busy, but tomorrow could be the day you finally take a step to do that thing you're wanting to. And the other important thing I want to say from this story to think about is the accountability piece, right? One thing that tipped the scales was that she knew that two other friends were doing it. So there is power in trying to align your goals with what other people have going on, and then you can help each other out. So speaking of, I would be very excited to cheer about your goals, and it would be a bright spot in my day to brag about you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. You in the car. You I'm talking to. Um, so if there's something you're proud of, whether it's a big goal you've achieved, a teeny step forward you're taking, something you've reconfigured in your life, finally taking the recyclables out, getting the stuff for donation, finally off to Goodwill, whatever it is, I'm proud of you and I want to talk about it. And now it is time for us to say ta-ta. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Today's episode, I'm done. I love a little recap because life is busy and I want you to have something to take with you. So what the heck did we do today? Well, the unsolicited advice of this episode was to find yourself a mean therapist or really whatever kind of therapist you truly need. Do not be afraid to shop around until you find someone you click with. In unrequired reading, I recommended, maybe you should talk to someone, a therapist, her therapist, and our lives revealed by Lori Gottlieb, who is going to give you a very authentic take on the human experience. And last but certainly not least, I gave big ol' props to Pam for standing up and doing stand-up comedy. And please, follow and review wherever you pod and join the Cheerberry on Instagram or Facebook by following me at the at Cheerbarian handle. That's where you can see resource links and other goodies. Now go on. Get out of here. Wave at a stranger. Drink more water. Okay, bye.